This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at North Marsh. But before that, this video is brought to you by Mark Bauer and Daisy Moonbeam. Thank you for being Farm Barons. So the North Marsh map can be found over at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you a little bit of the description. Welcome to North Marsh. This map includes 123 fields, one large forest, two farm yards, two BGAs, vehicle dealer, eight points of sale. Now the description says nine production points, but I have counted 17 production points on this map. Fields 122 and 123 are building sites. This also includes chickens, pigs, and cows pre-placed on the map. There are buy points for seed and fertilizer. And the description lists this map as being precision farming supported. Now, in addition to the map, you are going to need to download eight required mods. Those eight required mods are now listed on the website. They weren't listed yesterday when this map was released. But as of the recording of this video, those eight required mods are listed, and they include bale and pallet storage, bunker silo, newfangled variety, cow shed three plus three, Dutch shed pack, half timbered farm buildings, recycling center, sugar factory, and the wind turbine package. In addition to those eight required mods, we're going to be using our standard mods that we use when we look at maps. They are additional field info, additional game settings, field lease, and field calculator, and precision farming. Now, we'll tell you, if you load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find that the main farm is built out exactly how you're going to see it here in new farmer mode. In addition, we do own some starting machinery in all play modes. And I think you've also heard there, there are some jets flying around. The only difference is in the alternate play modes is you do not own any land and you have a slightly larger bank balance. So when we load into this map for the very first time, we start here at the Kloss dealership. And there is something I wanted to point out here while we are down at the dealership. Some of our starting machinery is in the dealer. So the Dude's Far Harvester here is ours, as well as this Kloss tractor. In addition to that, we have a Kloss baler, and Kloss trailer that are ours. And the forage wagon is also ours as well. So the rest of the stuff down here is just going to be for decoration. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. And one of the first things I think that is going to stand out about this map is the large irregularly shaped fields. And the fact that lots of these fields are interrupted by having either a wind turbine in them or a power tower in them and those fields that do have power towers and turbines those items do have collisions now i have tested on a few of these fields that you own you can indeed sell the wind turbine so if you wanted to get rid of the wind turbine and basically make it a complete field you could do that one thing that i do not know is if the wind turbine is visually just aesthetic or if it is also going to be giving you some money per hour, because I did not fast forward a few days. In addition to the standard crops that we have available to us in the Farm Sim 22, this map also includes field grass as an additional crop. And if we take a look at our lands area, you will see that we start up by owning Farmland ID 254. That is the main starting farm in any alternate play mode that can be bought for $194,471 and is 6.24 acres of size. In addition to the main starting farm, we have Farmland ID 49, 251, 57, 11, 73, 21, and 39. There is a secondary farmyard that can be bought down here at Farmland ID 241, sorry, 249. That can be bought for $261,000. In addition, we have two BGAs on the map, one at 253 for 972000 and one at 247 for $890,000. And as the description said, plots 122 and 123 are set up as buildable areas. 
go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. The farmland lease screen shows us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, and if those farmlands include any field or fields which are included. Then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? As we can see here, the farmland and field numbers are lining up one for one, which is always nice to see. That'll make it a lot easier to associate which field I want to buy with which particular farmland, especially on this chart when we're trying to figure out which farmland is going to cost how much money. Overall, the fields don't look to be overly expensive. They're all ranging somewhere in the hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollar range for the most part. Then we get into some of the larger plots, like field seventy three, which we already own at the start. That one was one point. $5 million. Take a look at our field calculator screen. This is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. Now, given the way that the farmlands and fields are laid out, I wouldn't expect to see the field sizes differing too much from the sizes of the given farmlands. For example, 73, which is up here, so it'll be 9.15 hectares in size. Let's go ahead and check out our precision farming soil map and see how it is being applied to these fields. Now I did check the log and we are loading the generic soil map. Now the description says precision farming DLC, which I assume would imply that it would have a custom soil map, but for whatever reason, the custom soil map, if it is included, is not being loaded. What I'm seeing in the logs is the generic soil map and that is indeed what we are seeing applied to these fields. We take a look at our crop counter. We do have the standard crop counter available to us in Farm Sim 22. And as you can see, we have field grass we can plant from March through November. And then we can harvest that from April through November as well. Taking a look at our prices screen, we do have the ability to sell all of our base game crops that are available to us in Farm Sim 22. In addition, we have the ability to sell our eggs, wool, and milk, as well as our silage, hay straw, and grass. We also have the ability to sell all of our base game production items that are available once again in Farm Sim 22. We do have multiple buy points for lime, and we also have the ability to get rid of our stones. Now here we can have multiple sell points for our new crop in field grass. We do have a new production in soy drink as well. And then as far as our platinum expansion items, we do not have the ability to sell any of the platinum expansion items pre-placed on the map, which is all fine because we can always put down our own if we wish to. And then if we are playing with pumps and hoses, we can sell our separated manure at the animal dealer. We start out with a fairly modest list of starting equipment given the number of fields and the sizes of those fields that we start out with. We do have a chicken coop, cow barn, and pigsty at the main starting farm, but we do not start with any animals at those. We do have contracts available on the map. We do not own any production chains at the start, and this map also does not have any collectibles. Let's go ahead and take a look at that starting fleet. As I mentioned, we start with the Kloss Axion 800 tractor, the Dutzfar Topliner 4090H Harvester, that's paired up with the 4090H header and header trailer. In addition to that, we have down at the shop, the Kloss Karyat 140 TD trailer, as well as the Reliant 455RC Uniwrap baler and the Zelon CFS 2501D0 forage wagon. Back at the farm, we're gonna find the Agrimaz POV 5XL plow, the HR4040 Power Harrow. Then we have the DC401 Subsoiler, the ZATS3200 Amazon Fertilized Spreader. We have the ELO Do It 7300 Mower. And then we have a 600 kilogram front weight. Take a look at our mods and DLCs. You will see that there are no custom vehicles or machinery that is also included with this map. There's one of our jets that fly around up there in the distance. Now at this point, I would typically tab over to the starting farm, but I thought, you know what, let's, let's fly over there instead because it's just a quick little, quick little jaunt 
over here to the north. And here we have our starting farm. And I will tell you that everything on the starting farm can indeed be sold and cleared off. So we got a nice two bay area here, bale storage, root crop storage, vehicle storage, whatever. And we have one of those newfangled bunker silos for our silage. We have a maintenance shed, a little trigger back there in the back. We have our chicken coop, standard base game chicken coop, 360 chickens. Then we have our standard large cow barn here. So we have our slurry point. Food and straw trough. Then on this end, we're going to have our cow point and our milk point. 80 cows in here. We have our pig area. And this is going to be the small pig sty. 108 pigs in this facility. Then we have our food. And of course, our slurry on the other side of the building. Conveniently placed between the pigs and the cows, we have a single manure heap. And then we have our farm silo, inside our large machine shed. Three bay garage for more machine storage. We have a silo for either mineral feed or seed. We have a storage silo for solid fertilizer. We have a diesel tank, as well as a power washer. And that is pretty much the main starting farm area. Now I mentioned, I mentioned that the machinery was here at the farm, but so far we haven't found a single bit of it. It might be hiding. Might be hiding somewhere else. Let me know in the comments if you know where the heck our machinery is located. In fact, let's go check something real quick. It's all back there. It's all at the shop. So there must be, it's, it's in behind the building. Okay, it's in behind the building. So as I mentioned, everything here at the main farm can indeed be sold. In fact, everything at both farm areas can be sold. We are going to be giving the map a full point there with respect to the ability to customize the farms. And we've got a whole lot going up here in town. I think what we'll do is we'll kind of come around and, and end there. Really interesting layout. Lots of windy roads. Interesting shaped fields as a result. And as I mentioned, lots of these wind turbines, which can be sold on land that you own. So, for example, we own Field 49. Where are we at? Here we are. We own Field 49. So if we wanted to, we could sell this. And then, you know, create fields and then make this a complete entire field. Over here we have a grain cell point as well as a lime buy point. Here on the other side. You see this is a fairly flat map. We do own this grass area that is directly below on this side of the berm between the ocean. I 
Now the entire southern, about third of the map is exclusively fields. So there really aren't any cell points kind of below this, this defined line right here. This ridge area. The only thing to the right of this ridge are fields. It's kind of an interesting way of kind of splitting the map up. Over here we have a cell point. We have our animal dealer. This map includes six large greenhouses and they are located below. And you can buy the land and then have access to those. We have bale storage located right here. Fuel point. Coming up to the BGA. I did try and I was successful in selling everything at each biogas plant. Another grain cell point. The BGA. So if you own the land and you own the BGA, you can sell the bunkers, you can sell the BGA itself, you can sell the sheds, you can sell the digestate storage tank, and you can sell the waste station. And that's at both biogas plants. Here we have the second farm. That's right down by the animal dealer and the greenhouses. And just like the first farm, we can sell everything at this farm as well. Now this farm does have some custom buildings associated with it. We'll be doing a proper look around that when we get to the drive portion. Some more cell points. The second biogas plant is over here just south of field 78. Again, you can sell everything at this BGA as well. Assuming you own the land and the biogas plant itself. You will have to buy those individually. Buying the land does not grant you the BGA, nor buying the BGA does it grant you the land. This map includes two sugar factories. One of those is directly ahead. In fact, let's talk about the production being built in. The description said there were nine productions, but really there are 17. There's two biogas plants, two sugar factories. We have a carpentry facility, a spinnery, a tailor, grain mill, cereal factory, a bakery, a dairy, and then six large greenhouses. And most of the stuff is going to be right here in town, right by your starting farm. So very, very convenient. And we have our dealer there fuel point and then we're going to have productions all over the place here so we have another sugar factory we have a carpentry factory we have a fuel point we have our spinnery we have our bakery we have our cereal we have our dairy We have a cell point. And then let's circle back around because this map does have a lot of ground textures and I want to show you those. So let's go on into build mode. And since we do have so many required mods, we're going to have a lot of buildings available to us in the build mode that are part of those required mods. So we've got several things under silos, under sheds, containers, tools and then our farmhouses as far as production goes we do have custom productions that we can put down here that are either part of the map and or part of the required mods as well as the cell points the animals there are some custom animal required mods and those are available then of course to put down and make use of and then as far as painting textures, let's go ahead and take a look at those. We have our animal mud. Asphalt. Concrete. 
Another concrete. Another form of stamped, kind of worn concrete. More of that. Then we have dirt. Forest ground. Grass. Grassy gravel. Kind of cobblestone concrete. We have pavers. Another form of those pavers. Lots of pavers to go from here. More cobbles. We have rock. And then we have wet sand. Then as far as our trees, fairly standard farm sim 22 basic trees and standard farm sim basic plants. So we do have... This is an interesting... I don't think we've seen something like this before. Does does give off a little bit of a sense of depth to it, so that's good. We have our various concrete pavers going on here. Let's make our way back over here to the shop then. We'll get into our Mahindra and we'll do our our drive. But really, before before we do that, where is the rest of our stuff? Oh, it's it's chalk it up to my visual impairment. It just blended into the background. There it all is. Okay. So everything, all of your starting fleet is in the shop. You're going to have to be transporting a whole lot of stuff back to the main starting farm. Very large area for our starting machinery to spawn in at here at the main shop. But one thing that you may find your most restrictive is going to be getting out of the shop. Not the widest exit and entrance to the shop. And then this is going to be pose a problem. As far as navigating around, we do have collisions on these guardrails. So I would say probably your best bet is going to be to limit your your machinery to medium-sized machines or less. Six meter or less, ideally anything and everything that should fold other than the super, super large stuff. All right, let's head on out. And the vast majority of the stuff is going to be right up here in town. <laughs> if you can, if you can make your way on the road properly. I like this texturing, dirt on the road. What would be nice? Let me know. Let's let's talk about a wish list for whatever comes next with farm sim. Be nice to have kind of dynamic roads where we're like you have weather and maybe like you get a lot of dirt and then it rains and like you know the road clears off and then maybe over time the road gets dirtier where you would have these entrances and exits i don't know what do you think so we got a fuel point we have our tailor So we have our pallet point, dump point, interactive point, and wardrobe. I like this tailor. It's been completely retextured. Snake through here. Narrow lanes, small, small trailers, small vehicles. It's going to be key. Key to successfully playing and navigating this map. 
So here we have one of our two sugar factories. Dump point around the back. Pallet spawn point, interactive point here along the sides. Got some deer that are uh, stuck. We have our carpentry, right? Pallet point, wood cell trigger, interactive icon. And then connecting right to our tailor. Sorry, not our tailor. Our spinnery. A lot about a tailor because it's the same kind of been retextured. So we have our pallet point, interact point, and dump point for the spinnery. And that then leads right into our bakery. Very well set up here. It's like everything just... If you're doing productions, this is production road. So we have our interactive point at the bakery. Dump point and pallet point. We have our cereal factory. Then on the other side of the road. Dump point, pallet point, interactive point. Over here we have the ability to buy product. Let's go ahead and see. This should be seed and fertilizer. Seed fertilizer and lime. And then we're gonna have a grain cell point on the other side of the building. Located right there. Narrow roads, but so far fairly easy to get in and out of things. We've already looked at the cereal factory, so now we have our our um, our dairy. Now we're interactive point, dump point, pallet spawn point is going to be probably back here at the loading dock. But we don't have the markers for that. So it would be nice to see that. Now I'm just going to take real quick and run up the road here. We have one item, then we'll circle back. That is a grocery cell point. That is located right here. Very well done. Decorative areas, right? Play areas in the yard. Really gives a sense of of life to the map. We do have traffic on the larger roads. So we have then our flour mill. We're here by Field 59, north of Field 60. Dump, interactive point, and then our pallets are configured to show up where. I mean, typically they're showing up over here, but again, they're not marked. So that's going to play into some scoring a little bit later. Then we have our recycling center. Which is going to be accessed off the back road. So various cell points for lots of stuff here at the recycling center. We have bought some animals, so I just want to see field grass. Is a field grass a crop for our animals? I don't know. I really don't know what the field grass's purpose is. 
If anybody has an idea of what you'd use field grass for on the North Marsh map, let me know down in the comments below. Maybe help out some fellow players as well. Now, as we make our way down to the next point of interest, let's talk about some of our scoring. We're giving the map a full point with respect to production being yelped in or areas set aside for such because we do have 17 production items pre-placed on the map. We're also going to be giving the map a full point with respect to the ability to sell all of our base game crops, animal outputs, and base game production items. So that is always a good thing in my book to see that you are able to actually sell what you can actually grow. As a player, I would be really frustrated to have invested time and money into a crop and then discovered when I go to harvest it that it's completely useless unless I go and invest more time and money into putting down a sell point. Can the farms be customizable? They are totally customizable. So if you want to completely wipe the farms out and start afresh, you can do that as well. So another cool point there. Here we have the second sugar factory. We have our interactive icon there. We have our dump point and our pallet spawn point. Now, when we get down to our biogas plant, I wanna I wanna stop and and pick up all of the productions and do a little production run through. We have soy drink as a new product, but we don't necessarily know where to get that soy drink. I'm assuming we're gonna get it at the dairy. Either I missed a road or there is no road that's running south of field 74, 77, and 78. It looks like there should be. That's okay. We'll just we'll just hit this BG over here. Man, those jets. It's like they're patrolling. Bit of a marshy area there. Nice to see the decorative elements. That one came up on me. So here we have another grain cell point. And then around the back, we should have the ability to buy again seeds, lime, and fertilizer. And then that's going to immediately lead into the entrance to the biogas plant. Like I said, we do have the ability to sell all of this stuff once we buy the BGA and then in turn also buy the land. So doing a quick rundown of our productions. We have the two BGAs, standard base game biogas plants. We have a sugar mill, one of the two sugar mills. We have our carpentry, fairly standard there. So as our spinnery and tailor. We've got the grain mill, fairly standard grain mill, cereal mill, and the bankery, bakery. So we have butter, cheese, and chocolate at the dairy. Then we have another sugar mill, and then we have our greenhouses. So where is where is then the soy drink that is listed here? Unless it is a custom production that is available with respect to a required mod, but it's not pre-placed on the map. Let's take a look here. Look at that. There's our sugar mill, carpentry, 
Spinnery, Taylor, Dairy, no, and a Sugar Mill. So I'm guessing the uh, the soy drink appears to be a holdout of something that is not to actually be on the map. So as you can see, we own the BGA, but we don't own the land. Okay. So this is a case where you have to buy the BGA and the land separate. They are not tied together. Is the one-way road. We are mavericks. And we ignore all road signs. Make our way back up north to the cell point and buy point. It is located by field 46. And this is once again going to be a grain cell point as well as a buy point for lime, fertilizer, and seed. So we are sitting at $700,000. Let's just see when we tick over, if we get money. Top of the hour. So here we have a buy point for our seed lime and fertilizer. We are earning money. Now we're at $701,000. So we do appear to earn some money from those wind turbines. Make our way down the western side of the map. These windy roads. Hope you don't get car sick, everybody. And we're making our way down here to the south so we can check out secondary farm, all of those greenhouse areas. It's kind of interesting how we own various plots of land kind of scattered around the around the map. It does give you the reason to drive around and explore more of the area. It's kind of how I use contracts, typically, is to see more of the map than other than just the fields close to the farm. We have a, another fuel point. And then we have our grain cell point down here. That's going to include a buy point for product, feed line, and a fertilizer. Right next door, we have our animal dealer, as well as a bale and pallet storage building. That's located right there. I can see it's taking a while to um, to really remember where all the roads are. We have an animal dealer. 
and it should have a bale cell point around the back. Location right there. And then right next door, you can see those greenhouses. Let's go ahead and head into our greenhouse area. And then we have a row of greenhouses. We have a water trigger. And then kind of kind of a little tight to get all of our pallets out of there, but we can take them all out in a row, I suppose. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six greenhouses all right here. And then just over the berm there, we have the second potential player farm. Wrong way, Charlie. How about we go this way? And none of those triggers are gonna come up until we buy the land. So let me go ahead and take care of that little requirement so we have a full through silage bunker some storage sheds for our machinery and then like I said this farm is kind of customized buildings as opposed to the first starting farm was base game buildings we got our grain silo machine shed then we have another shed here it's gonna be our silo dump and a fill point there slurry this is gonna be for our pigs Trying to get the trigger. There we go. 25. Just a small amount of pigs down here. 25 pigs. Oh, he just collapsed right there. So we got our food. We have our slurry. We've got a seed and mineral feed silo. Fuel point. We have our timber house over there. We have our cow area. Manure heap. 200 cows in here. We have our milk point. That's where we came in at. So we have our sleep trigger. We didn't have a sleep trigger for the first starting farm. And then down here we have two silos. We also have this one. So we have our dump point and our fill pipe should be right here. Yep, there's our fill pipe. And that should be this secondary farm. And as I mentioned, this farm is also totally, totally customizable. Couple more points of interest to hit here. Now, as far as buildings where appropriate are using the new texturing technique, I'm gonna give the map a half a point there. We do have a lot of base game buildings, a lot of retextured buildings, um, but there are some buildings like those down here at the secondary farm that are using a more flat uh, building texture. Some of these custom cell points are using that flatter texture. Does it really deter from your overall enjoyment and experience? No, it doesn't, but I do like to encourage the advancement of things from one version of the game to the next. So we are going to begin the map just a half a point there. 
a dump point for our grain. And then around the other side, we're going to have a fill point for seed lime and fertilizer. Right there. And then the last point of interest is going to be the second biogas point. And then our last metric for the score is going to be player interactive areas being clearly marked. We are going to be taking off a quarter of a point there because we did have a couple production areas that just did not have the pallet spawn point clearly indicated with the wonderful yellow and black markers. I do like to see those markers show up for all production points as well as when convenient cell points and animal areas because it really does help the player understand where things are going to come in at and the player does if the map is set up properly have the ability to turn those off if they don't want or need those visual aids so here at our second pga we've got two slurry storage tanks two large pull through bunkers nice shed for our machinery for the bga as well as a maintenance trigger inside of there and then the bga itself and as i said we can sell everything at all of the biogas plants. So if you want to do pumps and hoses, you want to do your own BGA, you want to clear this out completely and make it two more farms and make this a four-player multi-farm, multiplayer farm setup, uh, you could do that as well. So we're going to be giving this map a score of 4.25 out of 5 in the end. Now, one thing I do want to do, before we close this thing out, is check out the buildable areas at 122 and 123. Full send, heave ho. Uh, did I make it? I made it. So while it describes 122 and 123 as buildable sites, they are currently fields. They are perfectly flat fields, but they are fields. So if you do want to expand your operations down here in the southern part of the map, well, you can do that as well with these two perfectly flat fields. But you will have to sacrifice agriculture space in order to do that. Guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below for the North Marsh map. Well, it looks like this is where everybody is. It's a grass beach. Hmm. Checking out the cargo ships. And until next time. Happy farming. Just kick my feet up. <clears throat> Relax here for a little bit. Never seen me on a grass beach before. Kind of nice. I think we should see more of these. Should be a trend. Hashtag grass beach for the win.